Okay, so let's pray together in progress. before uh, we start. Our Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your grace and love. And because of your love, you saved us. We were miserable sinners and we were on the way to eternal hell because our sins were as many as our hairs. But you gave us true hope that uh, Jesus forgave all our sins, so we have this boldness to enter heaven when Jesus comes again. So Lord, thank you so much for making us your children. And we want to live the rest of our life for the glory of God and for the gospel. And we want to preach the gospel as much as possible. So Lord, please help us and be with us and strengthen us so that we can share this good news boldly and effectively with all the people around us. And Lord, uh, thank you for gathering us today on the Lord's Day so that we can listen to your word and we can have fellowship. So um, please uh, give us the, the word to encourage us and to, to strengthen us so that uh, we can live a good Christian life uh, in the rest of time. So from the beginning to the end, I commit the rest of time unto your mighty hand. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Okay, let's turn to Psalm number 8. Psalm number 8, verses 3 and 4. Psalm number 8, verses uh, 3 and 4. Let us read two verses together. Okay, let's read it together. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the, and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you visit him? Okay, we just read Psalm number 8, verse 3 and 4. Uh, this is the Psalm of King David, as you see in the title. And David, one night, I, I know it's night because he is talking about the uh, stars and moon. He was thinking about why God loves him so much. You know, what happened in his life was amazing because uh, he used to be a shepherd, right, tending sheep. And he was the youngest in his family, not eldest. So he was the youngest, the little one. Uh, tending the sheep and then uh, shepherd but now he is a king and his kingdom is expanding and God is bringing victory of a victory for him and his country Israel so one day he was uh, thinking who am I why God blesses me so much right and he was looking at the sky in the night when I consider your heaven the work of your fingers. It's not just work of God's hand, not even God's hand, God's fingers. You know finger, one finger? You know, with his fingers, he created the whole universe and the, all the stars and the moon. I think the problem of this modern age is that we are surrounded be, by this artificial light so much we cannot really see and appreciate the handiworks of God, right? Um, when I was in India, uh, in the beginning I was living on the top of the mountain, I think uh, 2,000 meters high because I was learning uh, how to speak the Hindi language. Uh, that place is called Musuri, beautiful place, um, 2,000 meters high. And then one night I looked up in the sky and I saw our galaxy, right? So many stars. It's like a really river, river of stars, beautiful. Because um, the air is so clear and uh, there's not much the artificial light, so I could see clearly the stars. I still remember. And have you seen the pictures from Mongolia? Sometimes the mission team goes to Mongolia and then take the picture of the night sky and then so many stars are there. Beautiful, right? So 
David was amazed to see the great work of God. And then he was wondering, this mighty God, why he cares for me so much and why he loves me so much and why he placed me in this position, the, the position of king, right? And I believe this is what we Christians should do more often, okay? Sometimes I ask brothers, sisters, how many times a day do you think about God? And they say, oh, pastor, I'm so busy. Maybe uh, when I pray in the morning and when I pray in the night before I sleep, I think about God, but in the middle of the day, I'm so busy and working and then, so I don't even think about God during daytime. That's too bad, actually. Because God always thinks about us. Right? It's like a one-sided love. He always cares for us and He loves us. And these two verses, I think this is the, uh, the theme of the whole Bible, actually. The Bible testifies of the Almighty God, right? Who God is and why He created the whole universe. And we have to think more about, we have to meditate on God more and more in our Christian life. Then we'll be amazed, actually. Wow, God is amazing. And His creation too. Recently, I was reading one book about, you know, there are many books about uh, you know, the creation of God, and I was amazed by one thing. You know, uh, in our body, we have uh, almost 100 trillion cells, right? Some people say 50 trillion, some people say 100 trillion. So 50 to 100 trillion cells we have in our body. That's a lot. But in your cell, there's a small, uh, a small thing called mitochondrion, mitochondrion, which produce energy. Uh, and in your body, in each cell, like there are 100 to 300 mitochondria, the small, uh, like a energy plant, power plant, working. And because of that small uh, mitochondria in your cell, that's how you can move, you know, you can sing. That is the uh, generating energy for your body. And on average, you have a 200 mitochondria in each cell, which means you have 10 to 20 quadrillion mitochondria in your body. And actually, I was searching for the word. I knew the trillion, one trillion. You know what trillion? After one, there are 12 zeros, 12 zeros. That is trillion. And then I was searching for the word for the next one. What is 1,000 trillion in English? Okay, 1,000 trillion. Uh, that is one, and then there are 15 zeros. And that is quadrillion, quadrillion. And in your body, you have 10 to 20 quadrillion mitochondria. So small power plant, and the number is astonishing, right? 10 to 20 quadrillion small power plant in your body, which produce energy day and night, day and night. That's how you can move. So you don't even, to, you don't even have to look up in the sky. You can consider your body. You think about your body, how amazing, you know? Uh, you know. We move around and then we dance and then we walk and then we think, uh, we, don't much, we don't think much about how it happens, but actually in your body, something amazing is happening. This small mitochondria, 10 to 20 quadrillion, is producing energy for you. And we can say the same thing. When I consider my body, the work of your fingers, right? That's amazing, Lord. You are Almighty God. Because God's wisdom is unlimited. He's so powerful, right? Actually, we know that He created everything by His word, like a, let there be light, and there was light. He didn't even need His fingers. Just by His word, He created you know, the heavens and the earth, right? 
we Christians many times forget how great or how mighty our God is. That's why we are worried about our life, what to eat, what to wear. You know? Suppose, just imagine, your father is the, uh, like, uh, the owner of like, a Samsung company, you know, the biggest company in Korea. So your father is the owner of the Samsung company. Would you worry about what to eat, what to wear? You know? Would you open the door of the refrigerator and then always check, do we have enough food? Huh? You wouldn't do that because uh, if your father is so rich, so powerful, why would you worry about what to eat, what to wear? No. We sometimes forget how powerful God is. Let me ask you, how big and how great your God is in your heart. Sometimes we make a God so small, so our God doesn't seem to do doesn't seem to be able to do anything for us. You know, that's why we worry, right? Oh, how can I solve this problem? Uh, we have to meditate on the work of God. Uh, let's turn to Psalm number 111. Let's uh, bookmark here, Psalm 8, because we'll come back here. Psalm 111, Psalm 111. Verses 2 to 4. 2 to 4. Let me read verse 2. Uh, the works of the Lord are great, studied by all who have pleasure in them. You see here? The works of the Lord are great, studied by all who have pleasure in them. What does that mean? We have to study the work of God. You know, about our body, about universe, about amazing work of God. By the way, <coughs> recently there was a hurricane, I think a typhoon, we call it typhoon, Mawar in Guam. And it destroyed many houses and then they suffered so much and then many Koreans who uh, went to Guam for uh, travel, they, they couldn't come back to Korea because of this uh, Mawar, the typhoon. It, was, uh, it has such a great power, right? Whenever we see some this kind of natural disaster, typhoon or you know, hurricane or even tornado, we know that how small we are, you know, we are nothing compared to the mighty work of God. Right? The works of the Lord are great, studied by all who have pleasure in them. We have to think about it. We have to meditate on the work of God. Verse 3, his work is honorable and glorious. And his righteousness endures forever. Verse 4. Let's read it together. He has made his wonderful works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. Right. His wonderful works to be remembered. We have to remember. Do you remember God's great work? Verse 5, He has given food to those who fear Him. He will ever be mindful of His covenant. He's giving us the food. You know, we'll have lunch soon, but uh, amazing that He is providing us with all kinds of fruits and uh, all the food we enjoy. There is so much abundance in our life and it's thanks to God. Verse 6, let's read it together. He has declared to his people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nations. He has declared to his people the power of his works. Do you know, this God, amazing God, has a compassion. Compassion, right? Uh, in verse 4, the Lord is gracious and full of compassion. That's why He provides everything for us. When I think about myself, I didn't bring anything when I was born, right? I was born naked. Everything I enjoy now is from God. Right? I have a family, and then the, I have a car, and then I have a computer, many things, but uh, I didn't bring anything into this life, and it is all blessing of God, and He's so gracious and so compassionate. God is giving and giving and giving. And do you know why God made so many stars? 
counted his stars to show us that his power is limitless. There's no limit in his power. Right? Let's remember. Psalm number 145. Psalm 145. 145. Verse 3 to 5. 3 to 5. Let's read it together. 3 to 5. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, and His greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall praise your works to another, and shall declare your mighty acts. I will meditate on the glorious splendor of your majesty, and on your wondrous works. This is also the Psalm of David. Even though David was a king, right? And I think he had many things to do as king, many businesses, but he took time and he was always meditating on the works of God. Verse 3, great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He praised the work of God. I, pr I praise you, Lord, your mighty work and his greatness is unsearchable. Unsearchable means uh, with our own knowledge, we cannot even see the full greatness of God. Verse 4, one generation shall praise your works to another. Do you, do you tell your children about how great your God is? You know, you have to tell them. Our God has given us so many things. Um, after I came to this Seoul Dobong church, I'm really thankful to God for all this uh, the nature we enjoy here because uh, this Dobongu is surrounded by mountains. Bukhan Mountain, Dobong Mountain, Surak Mountain, Buram Mountain, Sape Mountain. It's all mountains, okay? You should come here one time and then we can uh, climb up together. And then last time I was, uh, I climbed up this uh, Bukhan Mountain and then I was so amazed. It, there was a huge rock on the top of the mountain. So uh, there's a wire so that you can uh, hold onto it and then you, you have to almost, you, you are climbing on the rock and then uh, I saw many foreigners too. They didn't bring the gloves. That was their mistake. I, I watched one YouTube uh, video before I climbed the Bukhan mountain and then that person said we need a really good glove because uh, on the top you have to hold on to this uh, the, the steel wire to climb up to the, mount, uh, the top. Anyway, the view was so amazing. You can see as far as like a Lotte Tower, the much, much part of the soul is there and then the beautiful and amazing view I really enjoyed. And then I was thinking, just like a David, wow, how great. God is his his work, his creation is so amazing, right? One generation shall praise your work to another and shall declare your mighty acts. Praise him and declare it. Okay, verse five. I will meditate on the glorious splendor of your majesty and your wondrous works. Do you meditate? Do you think about God's great work for you? No. If you go to the deep sea. There are really strange looking fishes and then all kinds of the living things are there and then sky and all this work of God. One time, Job, Job was wondering, you know what, what, what was the problem of Job? He was suffering, of course, and then he was thinking, I didn't commit any sin which deserves this suffering. I, I, I don't know why this is happening to me. That's what he thought, actually. And he was wondering, God, are you okay? Are you doing everything right? Because I don't see the point in my suffering. So are you running this world or this human history okay? Because uh, uh, I have some doubt, right? And because of that, um, at the end of the end of the book of Job. God was asking Job so many questions like this. Job chapter 38. Let's see. Job chapter 38. 
verse 4 and 5. Uh, and uh, 4 to 6. Job chapter 38, verse 4 to 6. Let's read it together. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? To what were its foundation fastened? Or who laid its cornerstone? Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? This earth has been founded firmly. You know? That's why 8 billion of people live on this earth and no problem. And tell me if you have understanding. And verse 5, who determine its measurement? The distance between sun, the sun and the earth, the distance between the sun and the moon, and then the tilting angle of the earth, right? All these things. It's God's wonderful wisdom and His work, right? God is asking, Job, Look at the earth and everything. Everything is doing okay. You know, where were you? And then God talked about uh, dinosaurs, right? You know, dinosaurs are in the Bible, right? Because uh, that was the greatest animal, now extinct. We, we don't have a dinosaur, only the fossils. But at the time, there was a dinosaur. So God was talking to Job. You know who made these dinosaurs, this amazing creature a lesson to Job chapter 40 Job chapter 40 verse 15 uh, Job chapter 40 verse uh, 15 look now at the uh, behemoth which I made along with you he is grass like an ox uh, of course the word dinosaur doesn't appear in the Bible because it was a recent invention the word dinosaur was not there in, when the Bible was written. Behemoth is a great animal. Uh, and when you read it, you know it's a dinosaur. Verse 16, see now, his strength is in the hips and his power is in his stomach muscles. Verse 17, verse 17, let's read it together. He moves his tail like a cedar. The sinews of his thighs are tightly knit. He moves his tail, his tail. It's like a cedar tree. Cedar, uh, cedar tree is a great tree. Okay, it's tall. So the tail of this behemoth is like a tree, tall tree. Dinosaur is just like that, right? It has a great tail. This tail has a power. It can hit and then it can, you know, kill animals. And uh, verse 18, his bones are like beams of bronze, his ribs are like bars of iron. So his body is like a so strong, no one can catch this behemoth, right? Why? Why God created this amazing creature? Because to show God's work, God's power, God's this dinosaur is also God's handiwork, right? Behemoth. Um, verse verse um, eight, 9, 9. Have you an arm like a God? Or can you thunder with a voice like His? When there's a thunder, it's, like, it's a voice of God, actually. Have you an arm like God? Your arm is like God? No. We, you cannot even create a small ant. No. We cannot create life. No, God is so amazing. So Job, after listening to what God said, he understood. Oh, my suffering, my pain has meaning. You know, There's a reason why. Of course we know the reason. Uh, so many people were comforted by the book of Job. And then um, even Job was blessed more after this, his uh, trials. God is always good. God is always good. We don't have to worry about our life because it's an uh, almighty God. Psalm number 96. Psalm number 96. In Psalm, there are so many meditations on God and they all praise God for His wonderful work. Psalm number 96, verse 4. 96 verse 4 let's read it together for the Lord is great 
and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. He is greatly to be praised. He is worthy to be praised. Right? He is to be feared above all gods. Don't fear any other god. They are all idols. For six, honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Let's praise him. Let's honor him. Okay? Let's meditate on his great work. So from time to time, you better go out in the nature and appreciate his wonderful work. Beautiful flowers and great tall trees and then, you know, the sky, the beautiful stars. Let's meditate on them and know God is great. And the question is, this great God, almighty God, why he loves you and me, right? Psalm number 8, verse 4. What is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you visit him? Why? Why, God? Why you care for me? <clears throat> I was wondering many times. I'm nothing, actually, you know. I'm invisible, actually. I'm like a dust. Abraham said he's like a dust. Then why God gave His own Son, Jesus Christ, to die for me? It's, it's beyond my understanding, actually, right? Of course, I know that I have a spirit. Uh, God is spirit, I am spirit, I was created in His image. But look at, look at myself, look at yourself, you know. I mean, we are not recognized by many people and then sometimes we are become sick and we become powerless and I mean, we are nobody, basically. Why God cares for us? That was the question of David. God, who am I? I was a shepherd, tending sheep, and uh, I was the youngest in my family, and nobody cared for me. That's why when Samuel came to, to anoint the future king, uh, David was not there because he was the youngest. He was out there in the field, but all his brothers were there. So he was thinking, even in my family, I'm the youngest. Nobody cared for me. But why, God? Why you care for me? This is amazing, right? Just think about it. Whenever I think about heaven, heaven, I'm touched. What is the heaven? Do you know, in heaven, whatever you wish for will be realized in heaven. You will have everything you want in heaven. Like, uh, we don't want to die. In heaven, there's no death. You don't want to be sick. There's no sickness. You don't want to be old. You know, you'll be beautiful and young all the time in heaven. And you don't want to work. There's no work. And you don't, you fear the darkness. There's no darkness. Basically, in heaven, whatever you want will be there. And the heaven will be given to you only when you believe. The good news brought by Jesus Christ, right? Jesus died for sinners, taking away all our sins, washing away all our sins by His precious blood, and He made us God's children. How can God give us this beautiful heaven just by believing? We didn't do anything. We didn't pray. We didn't uh, uh, give money, or we didn't work hard for God. God says, just believe. Trust God. Okay, that He forgave all our sins by the blood of Jesus Christ. Then you will be given this wonderful and perfect heaven. Right? I think this verse 3 and 4, this is the theme of the Bible. Okay? Let's turn to uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. This, this is the main theme. Right? Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Let's read it together. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. The same thing. So, uh, without faith, 
It is impossible to please Him. Of course, God wants faith from you. Nothing else. Just faith. Trust. Trust Him in all things. So, two things are there. First, you have to believe that He is the existence, who God is. You know, how great He is, how mighty He is. He's the Creator. That's number one, you have to believe, right? Number two, He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. If you seek God, if you really search for the truth and the true God, the Creator, God, He will reward you with the eternal salvation. Because, you know, you will come to know that what God has done for you. What God has done for you. God is love. And He loves you so much. Let me tell you one thing, and this is really important. Many people ask this question, where this evil came from? Evil. You know, we know that God is the creator of everything. The Bible says God created everything. So didn't God create evil too? No, He didn't. So let me explain what happened, okay? It's all about love. God is love. And uh, God created us, we humans, as His loving partner. That's why uh, when Jesus came uh, and those who believe in Jesus Christ, the church is the bride of Jesus Christ, the bride. Jesus will be bridegroom, will be the bride. We, we, Jesus and we are in loving relationship, right? So, it's about love. And love, love, to love someone, we need free choice. A free will, basically, free will. So what God gave us is the free will and the possibility of evil. Possibility of evil means because we have the free will, we can choose to obey God or to disobey God. There's a possibility of disobedience, but still God gave us free will because that's how much He loves us. Free will means we are more precious than any other animals. Okay, Animal, they don't have the free will. They just live according to their instinct, natural instinct. But we humans have a free will. Even you know, some human, they choose to blaspheme God and to just rebel against God. I hate God, they say, you know. Even that much of free will was given to us. Why? God respects us and God wants us to love Him freely. Forced love is not true love. Remember, God never forced anyone to love Him. God wants us to choose Him freely out of our free will. That's why God gave the, uh, God created the possibility of evil and we actualize the evil. I mean, Adam and Eve, when they committed sin, they actualized the sin. That's why the evil came to this world, actually. God loves us and God wants us to love Him back. And this love requires free will. And let me tell you one thing. Uh, let's turn to Jeponiah. You know where Jeponiah is? Almost at the end of the uh, Old Testament. Uh, before Habakkuk, uh, Haggai, there's a Jeponiah, chapter 3. Jeponiah, chapter 3, verse 17. Jeponiah, chapter 3, verse 17. Let's read it together. The Lord your God in your midst. The Almighty One will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with His love. He will rejoice over you with a singing. Imagine a mother holding her baby. She is so happy. She is smiling. You know? When she looked at her baby sleeping soundly, that's the happiest moment for mother. And this is what I see. You know, when God look at us, the Lord your God in your midst, the mighty one will save. He saved us because he loves us. He will rejoice over you with gla gladness. 
Do you know how God look at you? He rejoices. He's so happy to look at you. Oh, my baby. Oh, my love. Gladness. Happiness. He will quiet you with his love. I, I uh, looked up this in NLT, New Living Translation. I think this uh, translation is more touching. With his love, he will come all your fears. With his love, he will come all your fears. That's what God does. When we realize God's love for us, all the fears are gone. Why? The Almighty God loves us. How much? Up to, you know, to give His own Son to die for us. And the last two sentence, He will rejoice over you with a singing. Can you imagine? Now God is singing. Why? Singing with joy. When, when He look at you, He's singing. Wow. He is so happy. He's so glad to have you. And that's why He wants to live with you eternally in heaven. You know, when you love someone, you want to stay with that person forever and ever. That's why, you know, uh, the, they, the uh, woman and man, they marry each other because they want to be together. And that's why God prepared the heaven. Heaven is for us, by the way, okay? To be with us forever and ever, right? One day, I was meditating on uh, Luke chapter 15, the prodigal son. Prodigal son. You know what the prodigal son did? He wanted to spend money. But he will get money only when his father dies, right? As an inheritance. So he was waiting, basically, <laughs> for his father to die. But his father is strong, so he doesn't die. So one day he went to his father and said, the son said, Father, there's money I, can, I will get when you die, right? Oh, yes. Can I get it right now? You know, what does that mean, actually? It sounds like, Father, why you don't die? I need money. I want to spend the money as I like, but you are so st healthy and strong. Ah, I'm tired of waiting, right? What kind of son is that, right? But anyway, the father gave him money. Okay, you take your money and then, you know, you, you, you do whatever you want. And you know what he did? He went far, far away from father, right? He just left him and he went to a far country. Why? He didn't want to be with father. Uh, because if father is there, you know, father might say something. No, don't do this, don't do this. So he, he didn't want to be, uh, get some kind of instruction from his father. So he just went far away and then he was spending all his money with his friends. You know, these friends, when he became poor, when he had nothing, they all left him. They're not true friends, actually. This is not true love. Okay? And then when he was starving and when he was almost dying, he came back home because, you know, that's the only way he can survive, the famine. And he was thinking that, oh, I, I cannot ask my father to receive me as uh, his son. I will ask him to take me as his servant. You know, God, uh, father, I don't deserve to become your son. Just take me as a servant. And when he was coming, you know what happened, right? father saw him first and then he was running running and then hugging him and then father was so happy right let us listen to Luke chapter 15 Luke chapter 15 verse 23 24 Luke chapter 15 verse 23 24 let's read it together and bring the fatted calf here and kill it and let us eat and be merry for this my son was dead and is alive again he was lost and is found and they began to be merry father didn't ask anything about the money right did he mention the money did he ask his son where, where did you spend the money no not at all 
the money, he doesn't care actually, right? And he said, bring the fatted calf and here and kill it. This calf is a symbol of Jesus Christ actually. Uh, for this lost son, the calf was killed, right? Jesus was killed for sinners, right? And let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again, and he was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. Father was so happy. Whenever one sinner is saved, whenever one sinner is born again, there's a feast in the heaven. There's a feast, right? God is so happy. Oh, one more soul is coming. One more soul is coming. One more soul is alive. You know, he was dead but now alive. He was lost but now found. This is the heart of God. You'll see when you go to heaven, you'll see God will be running, running toward you. Welcome, my son. He loves us so much. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Verse 32. Romans chapter 8 verse 32. Let's read it together. He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? God did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. He was not hesitating to give his son for us. He was not reluctant to give his son for us. He was gladly gave his son. He was willingly gave his son. Right? Why? Because that was the only way to save sinners. To save sinners. And then now, how shall he not him also freely give us all things? He wants to give and give and give. He's a giving God. You know, when you love someone, you want to give gift to that person again and again. Because when you see that person happy, you become happy too, right? So you want to give some gift to your loved ones, your wife, your husband, or your children, right? I experienced it when I was in India, whenever we visited Korea. Uh, once a year, we visited Korea to renew our visa, and every time we came to Korea, my mother-in-law, she, she gave us so many things, and I told her, Mother, we cannot carry them all because there's a limit on my baggage, 23 kg, kilogram, right? More than that, we have to pay like a, almost $40 for each kilogram. <laughs> Very expensive, right? So I, I explained to her, don't buy many things. Uh, we cannot even take them to India. It doesn't work at all. She, she's buying so many things all the time, right? So we have to leave some in Korea because we cannot take them all. Giving and giving and giving. That's what God gives, what God does for us, right? Listen to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 61, verse 10. Isaiah chapter 61, verse 10. Isaiah chapter 61, verse 10. Let's read it together. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with a robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself with ornaments and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. Okay, as a sinner, we cannot cover our sins, right? And uh, even our good work is uh, like a dirty rags, right? We cannot, we cannot cover our sins with our own good work. That's why... He has clothed me with the garments of salvation. These garments of salvation, these robes of salvation is so perfect, so beautiful. Because this is what happened. Whatever righteousness Jesus did in his life, 
because he lived a perfect life. His righteousness was given to us so that you know, we become as righteous as Jesus Christ. And all our sins were taken by Jesus. He took it and he died on the cross to pay the debt, to pay the wages of our sins, right? So we exchange it, right? And these garments of salvation, how much beautiful it is. Is this like a, as a bridegroom decks himself with ornaments and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. So this is what happened. When God look at you, you look like a bridegroom who adorns himself, he decks himself with ornaments. You know, the bridegroom looks so handsome on a wedding day. And when God look at you, you look like a bride who adorns herself with her jewels. You're like the most beautiful uh, woman in the world, like a, you know, the bride on a wedding day. They look most beautiful. In, in, it's a lifetime thing, right? So they look so beautiful, right? The bride and bridegroom looks handsome and good looking. That's how God look at you with this uh, garments of righteousness. You are so beautiful in God's eyes and He is waiting for you. He wants to see you as soon as possible, actually. God, why you care for me so much? Why you are mindful of me? Why you visit me? Why you saved me? Why you made me God's children? The answer is only one thing, right? God loves you. His love, His love is uh, unlimited. His love boundless okay, and eternal. Nothing in this world can satisfy us but the love of God. Remember, if you search in this world for something to make you happy, you know, what God, what this world will provide you is one, it's not eternal. Two, it's always limited. No limit, uh, it's always limited, right? So it's not eternal, it's limited, it's not perfect. Only God's love and what God provides, prepares for you is eternal. And let's go back to Psalm, Psalm number 8. Let me tell you one more thing. So Psalm number 8 verse 3, When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained. Okay, so from this verse we know our God is mighty God, great God, you know, powerful God, uh, full of wisdom, eternal God, right? And verse 4, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you visit him? So this almighty God loves us. So almighty God loves us. Then what happens? Because we are sinners, God should take care of our sin to be with us. That's why verse 5 and 6, 5 and 6, let's read it together. For you have made him a little lower than the angels, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet. This verse 5 and 6 is about Jesus Christ. This verse 5 and 6 is about Jesus Christ. For example, For you have made him a little lower than the angel. This is the first coming of Jesus. When God came for the first, uh, when Jesus came for the first time, 2,000 years ago, he came as nobody. He was a baby. Uh, 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 and then the, he was very poor, right? Actually, this scripture, this psalm, was quoted in Hebrew. That's how we know this is about Jesus Christ. Let's bookmark here and let's turn to Hebrew chapter 2, verse 9. This psalm, number 8, was, is quoted in Hebrew chapter 2. So Hebrew chapter 2, verse 9. Let me read. Uh, let's read it together. Hebrew chapter 2, verse 9. Let's read. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels, for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, 
by the grace of God, might taste death for everyone. We see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angel. When Jesus was in this world, in human form, he was lower than the angels. Because angels, you know, angels are spiritual and spirit and then they have power. But when Jesus came in human body, he was limited, right? He was lower. And actually, if you read uh, Hebrews chapter 2, this uh, Psalm number 8 was quoted in the previous verses. So this is about Jesus Christ, right? So let's come back to Hebrews chapter uh, 8 verse 5. For you have made him a little lower than he, the angel. This is the first coming of Jesus. And, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. This is the second coming of Jesus Christ, actually. When Jesus comes second time, he will come with glory and honor. Verse 6. You have made him to have dominion of the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet. You have put all things under his feet. So everything will be under Jesus' feet. All the creation will bow down before him. Right? And not only Jesus, actually. Jesus is the King of kings, Lord of lords, we will be King and Lord, and we will uh, rule over everything too. So this uh, glory will be given us too, because we are in Christ. We are in Christ. We are together in Christ. By the way, verse 3 is about how mighty God is. Verse five, uh, 4 is about how much God loves us. Verse 5 and 6 it's about the first coming of Jesus, second coming of Jesus, the solution of God for our sins, right? The solution. Jesus Christ, the Savior. I'm wondering, how could these four verses, verse 3, 4, 5, 6, this summarized the whole Bible, right? This is the summary of the whole Bible. The Bible is about God, how mighty He is, how great He is. Who he is. He's the creator. And then the Bible talks about how much he loves us. You know why God created the heavens and the earth? It's for us. He doesn't need the heavens and the earth for himself. He doesn't need heavens and the earth for angel. It's for us, right? All the animals, birds, fish, the forest, mountains, the oceans, all for us. Okay? He loves us. The whole Bible is a love letter of God for us, right? And then we see verse 5 and 6, Jesus Christ. Yes, Jesus Christ is the one, the Holy One who came to save us from our sins. The whole Bible testifies of Jesus Christ, who is our Savior, who is our Lord. So these four verses in Psalm number 8, this is the summary of the whole Bible and we have to Always remember it, okay? And we have to meditate on it. By the way, in his first coming, when Jesus came, he became really lower than the angels, right? Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. Verse 7 and 8. Philippians chapter 2, verse 7 and 8. Let's read it together. But made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant, and coming in the likeness of man, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. So when Jesus came to this world in human form, he had no reputation. He was not famous. He was not praised by people. You know, he was despised, actually. You remember? People were spitting on his face when he was carrying the cross. He became so low for you and me. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself. He humbled himself. That's how much God loves us, right? Jesus came and he took all the pains and suffering on his body for our sins. He became so humble. He was nobody, right? Nobody. Let's remember. But when Jesus comes again in his second coming, he'll be so glorious 
because he'll be the king of kings, lord of lords. Let's turn to Revelation chapter 17. Revelation chapter 17, verse 14. Revelation chapter 17, verse 14. Let's read it together. These will make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb will overcome overcome them. For he is Lord of lords and King of kings, and those who are with him are called, chosen, and faithful. When Jesus comes, he will conquer all his enemies, right? He is the King of kings, Lord of lords. Let's turn to uh, Revelation chapter 19, verse 11. Let me read. Revelation chapter 19, verse 11. Now I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on him was called faithful and true, and in, in righteousness he judges and makes war. Verse, uh, verse 12 and 13. Let's read it together. His eyes were like a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no one knew except himself. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. This is our Jesus. Okay? His eyes are eyes of flame, of fire, and his head, many crowns, not just one crown. So many crowns, glory of glories, right? And he's coming to be the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, and will be with him, and will be uh, the conqueror with him, will be the victor with him in, when Jesus comes again. Isn't it, is, is it just David who received God's love and grace and blessing? No. We have received more than David, actually. Uh, do you know how much, uh, how much blessed you are? You are living like a king. Actually, you enjoy more than king, right? The kings in old time, they never flew in airplane, right? The king, I don't know whether they had uh, ice cream or not. Uh, you know, we enjoy very uh, ice cream and all this food. And then we enjoy uh, like our mobile phone. Do you think the kings had a mobile phone? No, they, they when if they could see the mobile phone, they would be so surprised, right? What is this? It's a miracle. Why there are so small people are in this small device, right? Like a, anyway, uh, what we enjoy right now is more than the, what King would long time ago. Like David, you know, we have to meditate on God his might and his power and we have to meditate how much grace we have received from God God who am I why you are mindful of me right? why you made me your God's child and uh, the angels will be our servant you know we'll be like you and uh, so we have to meditate and we have to appreciate it we have to give thanks to God more and more Christian life it's not difficult, actually, when you remember this. When you remember who God is, and when you remember how much bless, blessing you have received from God, and how, how uh, valuable our salvation is, actually. You know, we cannot even buy our salvation with all the money in this world. But God saved us freely. Right? And then when Jesus comes again, He's coming as king of kings and then we'll be with him as a rulers, right? We'll enjoy everything. And when David meditated on all these things, he was thankful to God more and more and he was uh, always uh, praising the Lord. And that's how we live our Christian life too. You know, why we are uh, trying to uh, work for the Lord or have summer retreat, it's very hard, but we go there and we work because we know that many people will get saved and then that will glorify God and that will please God. 
when we think about what God has done for us, it's nothing we do for Him, actually, in this world. So like David, let's meditate on God and on our salvation and all the blessing and on Jesus Christ. Then, you know, that will uh, strengthen us as Christians so that we can continue to serve Him in the rest of our life. Let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for all the blessings we have received from you. And when we study Psalm number 8, David was meditating on how great you are and how gracious you are in, on Jesus Christ. And Lord, fill our heart with all your blessings so that we can continue to thank you and we can return your uh, grace in our life. Lord, we know that you will be so pleased when the lost souls are brought to Jesus Christ and when they are born again. So use us so that we can preach the gospel more and more, so that we can bring glory and honor to you by preaching the gospel. And we pray for the summer retreat we are preparing. This is the biggest event in our, in, in our year and there will be seven times of summer retreats and we will be preaching the gospel boldly and effectively there and help us to bring many lost souls there so that we can preach the gospel and, and we can uh, expand your kingdom more and more. And please use us and give us heart to reach out for lost souls so that we can please you uh, more and more in our life. Thank you so much for this time and I pray everything in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.